in Power Director 17, we're going to teach you how to animate those color boards, those texts, and make you look professional in your Power Director. As you can see here, how Subscribe Today slides out, the text in the box is perfect. Also at the top, you'll see where it says click the bell, slides down, and it goes back up. This is the lesson we're going to teach you in Power Director 17 today. So stick around and learn how to animate your color boards. Within Power Director 17, I'm going to show you how to actually animate your lower thirds with the color board and text. I'm also going to show you how to make a template. And in order to do that, you're going to have to make basically an image that's green or blue. And we're going to do actually a green screen effect. Now to pull all this together, these are the colors that actually equal green for a green screen. These are the colors that actually equal blue. So whatever paint program you're using, you would actually use these colors. You're going to make the size of your image a width of 1920 and a height of 1080. Now, when you actually run a paint program, whether it be paint.net or whatever paint program you're using, when you click on new, it's going to ask you for the size. Just make sure you put that size in. Now, most of the time you're going to put in an RGB color, maybe a hex color, depending on the paint program you're using. So you'll probably put in a hex. As long as you put that number in, you'll make a green screen or you'll make a blue screen. Now let's head over to Power Director and see why we're making this. In Power Director 17, we're going to take a green screen, a picture of a green screen, and we're going to use it for our template. And we're going to animate making some lower thirds using color boards and text. So I'm going to grab this, and you can do this with a blue screen too. It's up to you whichever one you want to use. So I drag my picture of a green screen down on the timeline, just like I did there. Now what I'm going to do is I need a color board. And up here in the top left, you're going to see an arrow. Make sure you open that arrow up, and then you're going to see where it says color boards. And you can click that. The media content room is where we've got, you know, where you've loaded your videos and stuff. So we got the color board. I want white. We're going to bring it down. I'm going to grab white. And I'm going to drop it on the timeline. Just like that really easy I'm gonna double click or you can go into pip designer your choice so now I'm all loaded in my pip designer here on power director and the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I drop down object settings and you'll see that up in the top left and I want to bring that down and you see where it says maintain aspect ratio I want to turn that off and that's going to allow me to really design this how I want by simply grabbing these little white dots and moving the box around. And you'll notice, you'll even see that there's some, all these little ant trail lines on here. Now, how I got that was over here on the right side, we've got this little box. When you click that box and you put your mouse over grid lines, you can actually set what you want and it will actually put those little lines in for you. Those lines are important because when you move your box around, it actually snaps it to those lines, which helps you get it in place. So they're kind of important. So I'm actually snapping it to the top line and I'm pulling this up a little bit to give me that look. Okay, so let's animate this. First, I want to make sure I take this to one minute. And now I've got my playhead here. And over here on the left, where it says position, I'm going to hit this uh, diamond and it's going to create a keyframe. Poof. And basically, that simply means this is where our rectangle is starting. Now we want this to go left and off the screen. 
So before we go any further, once we have our keyframe, we want to make sure that we make this go all the way back to the beginning. So we're going to hit stop. And there we go. And now our playhead over here is back at the beginning. Now you could grab this right now and drag it off the screen and it will work just fine. But if you do it wrong, then you'll end up with like the snake effect. Or you can use the controls at the top here where it says pre uh, object settings, where your positioning is. So we got the X and we got the Y. Y goes up and down, X goes left and right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the bottom X and you're going to see the box slowly creep across the screen. This is going to make sure I have no up, I have no down, and I have a nice perfect slide. And I literally just want to hold this down until I get to the end. It may seem tedious, but if you do these as templates, once they're done, you never got to do them again. I'll come back and I'll show you when we get near the end. And as you can see, we're slowly getting near the end. Now, like I said, I could have grabbed it and dragged it. But if I would have went up a little or down a little, it wouldn't have looked as nice. And I would have created the snake effect. This way, I know it's going to slide off perfectly. And we'll stop there and we're good. You'll also notice over here, it now has a keyframe here. I'm going to say OK. And now let's hit play and let's see what happens. And notice how it slides in. That's kind of cool. So I'm going to go back in here by double clicking it and we don't have it sliding back off the screen. I want it to slide off the screen. So I'm going to go down here. We kind of want to keep basically whole numbers if I can. And I'll go to say 430 is what I'll do. Now this one's a little bit different. We're not going to click the triangle this time. This time we're actually going to right click. Make sure you're on the position line. There we go. I was on the wrong line. Make sure you're on the position line. And then what we want to do is we want to duplicate previous keyframe. Boom, it's going to go there. This one here, all we want to do is drag it off the screen to the end. And now we're ready to go. And I'm going to do the same process up here by position. And I'm just going to hold it down. And I'm going to have it now go off the screen. And it's going to drop another keyframe in there that's going to make it actually just kind of crawl off the screen when it's finished. And that's the total process of animating something. Now, I could actually do this up and down. Um, you can get quite creative with this, is what you can do. And I don't even have to use a color board. If I wanted to use um, my a paint program, I could actually make my boxes so they don't have to be like a rectangle. I could use an image and do this with. So maybe I could go buy a nice looking, you know, an oval box or a different shape or whatever. And then I can actually use an image and do the same thing. And I'll come back when I'm near the end. And we're getting closer to the end. This really only takes a minute or so to do. But instead of you guys sitting there watching a box go across the screen ever so slowly, the magic of video editing so I can speed this up for you. And again, I just wanted to come off the screen a little bit. Right about there, I'm good. And then I'm going to hit OK. So now I've got a box that literally slides in and the box slides out. Now it was maybe a little bit too fast. Now something to note about this, OK? The closer these two keyframes are together, the faster that box will travel. The further apart from these keyframes, the slower the box will travel. Now, me and I've got it all set up. I can grab this now, and I can bring it back a little bit to slow it down. And I'll bring it back to say, I don't know, maybe 4. That's 416. Well, let's try 415 right there. And then hit OK, and let's see how that looks now. So once the keyframes are made, you can actually play with them. That's a little better. So you can actually play with them and get them how you want. So now we want some text. So now I'm going to go over to my text up on the top left, grab the default one, drag it down, put it underneath my color board, and then I'm just going to shrink it up so it matches up with my other two boxes here. And the same process is going to begin. 
We're going to double click on my title or go into the PIP design room. Now, first thing I want to do is, again, I want to turn off maintain aspect ratio under object settings. And then I want to make this look somewhat pretty. But on the playhead here, if I just kind of click that, move it over so I can see my box. This way I'll see my whole box come out and then I have something to lay my text on. So I'm going to go to character presets up here. And I'm going to pick one of these. I don't know, I guess I'll pick the black one. So what we're going to do is type subscribe in the box. Move it down. And because we turned off the aspect ratio, I can shrink this to pretty much any size I want. And if you find this kind of like, I don't know, a pain to move. See, I can't really see what's going on there, and I can't really see if it's moving. Close your character presets and head on over back to your object settings. And again, remember, we have our positioning to where we can set this up a little bit better and get really close to what we want. So there we go. We got that. So the same process begins here. We're basically going to set this at one minute because we want the numbers the same. It's very important that these numbers are the same as the first one. But you'll notice we don't see no keyframes. Well, they're actually there. But you got to look really close, and you'll see that little arrow. Click that arrow, and now it comes down. And now under position, we're going to click that diamond, which is going to add us our keyframe. Now, we want subscribe to go off the chart, just like our color board did. So again, we're going to make sure we hit the stop button so everything's back at the beginning here. And then we're going to hold down that X and we're just going to hold that down until that climbs off the screen. And this way we get a nice smooth exit as it comes off the screen. And as I get closer to the end, I'll come back. And we're getting closer to the end. And you're starting to see why I want to make this as a template because I don't want to do this every time I make a video. I can actually make a template where I just drop these on the screen as I need them, and then I can use them when I choose to. And as it gets closer to the end, I make sure it comes off the screen just a little bit, and voila, we're good. And I'm going to say OK. So now what's going to happen is we're going to go back to the beginning, hit our play, and they should both slide on together just like that. But they're not going to both exit because we haven't done the subscribe yet. So the first thing I need to know is my numbers for what I did with the color board. And my number here is, I'm going to click on this little keyframe. If I can get my little hand there, there we go. Up here in the, in the time, I see it's 415. That's what I need to know. I'm going to hit cancel, and I'm going to go back. Now I'm going to click on my text again, go back in the PIP Designer of Power Director, and we're going to go down to 415. Or we can just type it in. And now we're there. And again, we're not going to click keyframe. We're actually going to right click on the position line. And we're going to duplicate previous keyframe here in PowerDirector. So now we've got that. We're just going to take this, drag it to the end. And we're going to hold our X down again and make it trot off the screen so that way it's animated. See, when you grab this and you drag it off the screen, and if you jerk it up a little bit or down a little bit, it won't look very professional. But if you actually use the arrow keys like I'm doing here, then it's going to come off nicely. Now, even if I stop and I kind of mess up because my mouse moved a little bit, no big deal. I can still begin. Nothing's going to get out of whack on me. And that is actually very, very important when you're figuring out how to animate things in PowerDirector. Now, like I said, you could actually use images. You could use logos. You can actually do this with a lot of things. And the animation sequence is always done the same. There is no difference with it. So you can get quite creative with this. When you add it to a green screen like I've done here, which is nothing more than an image with the proper colors, 
Now you can develop and make your own templates and use them in your videos at will. I'll come back when we're at the end. Now we're near the end. I come off a little bit and right about there. And now I say okay. So now these two should match up pretty good. If I hit play, it slides in perfectly with the text. And it should slide out perfectly just like that. So there we go. We have ourselves a template. And you can do this up and down or whatever you want. So now I'm going to go to produce. And I guess I'll call this um, subscribe temp, subscribe template, and then I'm just going to compile it. And you'll notice how quick it goes. It's going that quick because there ain't that much to this really. I'll go back to my edit, and there it is here called subscribe temp. So now I can use this as many times as I want. So if I bring a video down, and I put a video here in the timeline, okay? And now I say, well, I want to use my template. All I got to do is drag it down here. But the screen's all green. Well, that's not a big deal, because all we got to do now is double click it. Again, we're going back into the pip designer. It seems like we're living there. And then we go to what you see up here in the top left, chroma key. So turn that on. Put a check mark in that box. Use the eyedropper. It don't matter where you click. And then hit OK. And we're done. If I want, I can even use it, you know, over and over in the videos as much as I want. And you can see now how this is actually saving me a whole lot of time. The work is when you actually make it, like we just did. You know, and all I'm doing is double clicking, going in the PIP Designer in Power Director, and then hitting the Chrome key and setting myself up like that. So now, when I go back to the beginning and I play this, you notice how it slides in, then it's going to slide out, and then we're going to slide in, and we're going to slide out. It was quite an interesting day when I was actually taking that video. And I actually caught them walking like that. So that's how we actually animate and make lower thirds in PowerDirector 17, or any PowerDirector for that matter, where you can actually animate, move things on the screen, move things off the screen. You're really just getting used to a couple keyframes. At any rate, guys, I'll catch you on the next one.